In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can load our own custom images into ZBrush and use those as image planes so we can model off the top of them. We're going to look at three different methods for this. The uh, first one is using the spotlight feature that you see here. Uh, the second one that we're going to be taking a look at is under texture and we're going to do this reference views and uh, loading up an image plane uh, with, with that. And we're also going to be taking a look at uh, this grid mode and taking a look at uh, the grids and how we can load up an image plane using that. So there's three different methods. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to do, we're going to hop on over to Photoshop and we're going to take a look at how we can make an image and get that ready to pull inside a ZBrush. So let's get started. So in Photoshop, the first thing that I'm going to do is grab an image of something. So I've already got these designs put on a layer and there's transparency on there. I can just use the marquee tool like this and hold down shift and I can make sure there's something that's nice and square. I'm just going to make this square. I'm just going to make my life a little bit easier. I'll just kind of drag this thing up. Um, I could do a copy merge. That's control shift C. Uh, you could do this up here under edit and then copy merge that way right here. Um, now I can just make a new document, Control N, and uh, that stuff's up and through there if you want to grab it. But I'm going to say we create. I'm going to paste, Control V, just like this. Now this is going to give me this uh, fish on just the background, like that. Now if I want to grab this with just the transparency, I can do Control C to copy, and uh, that's under Edit Copy, right there. And then we can paste this in here. We can do Control V. And maybe I'll just line this thing up. I'm going to tap V to put on the move tool that you see here and try to get this into place. It's not a big deal about if it's shifting just a little bit. Um, I can just kind of nudge this with the left and right arrow key, kind of like this. And we're just about in place for that. So I'll just tap that. This will be good. Um, so I'm going to also take this and I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to use my foreground color picker and just make it black and then fill it with black. Uh, ZBrush will take, I'm sorry, I'm going to hit Alt Backspace and uh, that will fill it with this uh, color right here. ZBrush will take anything that's uh, pure black and then turn that into transparency. So I might want to come here to my design and just bump up the levels just a little bit on these edges. I don't want those to dis disappear. So we can go to image adjustment and we can go to levels and let's find levels right here. And then we can drag up the, uh, the overall levels like this. I'm just going to drag it up just a little bit so there's no pure blacks on there. And if I hit OK for that, then we're good to go. Um, now I could just flatten everything, layer, flatten image like this. Uh, we could do that and say, I'll say File, Save As. It doesn't matter where you put this thing. Um, I'm going to just, there's different file formats that you can pull into ZBrush. It will do a Photoshop document. Um, so I can just do this, um, call it uh, Fish Template, like that. Save it and then hop on over to ZBrush. So here inside of ZBrush, there's a couple different ways that you can add um, image planes within the uh, program. I'm going to show you uh, Spotlight. So under Texture, if you import in that image and you go here and find it, it'll load it under Texture. I might as well take this and dock this off to the side. So I'm going to click and drag this over here like this so we can kind of keep looking at that. If we click it and we do uh, turn spotlight on, we can do that and then we can say add to spotlight. It'll open up the light box. I don't want that. I'm going to hit the comma key and close that. So the controls with this will let you uh, kind of click and drag this thing around. You can scale this thing down and I'm not going to do too much on the controls of spotlight. There's, I've got videos out there that show you how to use spotlight if you really want to get into it. Um, you've got that. Uh, if we hover around through here, we'll find opacity and we can drag this thing up or down and dial it in or out, depending uh, how you want to see through the model, I guess, you know. Um, and then to turn this on or off, you can tab Z and it'll turn off the spotlight. Um, and if you hit Shift Z, it'll turn it off completely, 100%, okay, like that. So I'll tap uh, Z like that to turn that off. That puts the spotlight in position for me. The only problem is that uh, any of your brushes, if you go to sculpt on there, it's going to think you're going to want to try to project this and paint on there. 
and that will be a problem okay so to fix that I'm just gonna close some of this stuff that you see here I'm gonna go to brush I'm gonna dock this over here and you should see under samples the spotlight projection you want to turn that off and you might need to use this is on a per brush basis I believe so if I put on clay tubes um, no it's not so it looks like uh, maybe that's been changed or I just was thinking incorrectly about that so that's cool that we can turn that spotlight projection off I used it enough I put it on my interface and it's right there so we can kind of grab it um, now you could do stuff like we can take the model that I've got I can rotate it around I can scale it up try to kind of match it up a, a little better like this right and then um, maybe I turn perspective off if I want a true orthographic kind of camera like this and um, at that point once you've got everything kind of matched up there's different ways that you can uh, store camera positions within the program uh, with a spotlight you're probably gonna want to use something like this under document you go under here and under zap link properties you can see you've got access to some different cameras that you can um, make here so I might just say you can you can make a front back left or right so if you do a, click on this front it'll make store whatever view you have and it'll try to build a back and if you do a right or left it'll try to make that for you as well so I might just use a custom brush just like that now um, as far as I know, uh, at the time of this video, these cameras are not saved with your project. So I would say save these views so you can always get back to it. And so you can maybe do fish temp or whatever, give it a name. Um, views like this, just give it some kind of name. And then you can um, always go to your next session and you can go back down to uh, Zaplink properties and then you could say load views and you can load them up and then you can just always click. Let's say I move my camera on accident, right? We can go to two document and just say custom one and it'll throw us back there where we're at, right? So then now if I put it on like the move brush or something like that and I wanna try to match this thing up better, you know, it's gonna be pretty easy for me to do that it's going to be pretty easy for me to kind of match up on there with things and you can see like remember I was telling you the pure black will get knocked out from that image so that's kind of cool how that works right so this is how you could uh, easily load in an image plane with uh, using spotlight so I'm not going to do too much with the model right there like that and again if you hit uh, control shift Z um, or shift Z, sorry, that'll turn off uh, the, the spotlight altogether and you can always uh, kind of bring that back in. Now, um, I'm not sure if the spotlight will save with your current project or not. I'd have to try that out, but you can save the spotlight and you can load it in at a later time, right? Um, so we can call this fish, something like that, spotlight. And then we could always um, load that spotlight in at, at a later time for something that we have. Okay, so that's that's how we can get our camera views on and save them and get our image and uh, kind of apply that as well. So that's the spotlight method of being able to do things, okay? There's also under texture, if we uh, go and let's just dock this again and make sure we've got this, they do have a thing called image plane and you can load um, an image and we can say this fish temp again like that and it's going to throw it into the back and through here like this um, you've got this thing this image size that you see here and I think we have to click load image if we want to have it be a smaller size kind of like that I'll just put a hundred percent kind of like that and then reload that image I'm pretty sure that these actually save with the project um, you can see it's already set on a front view if you click that it might do something kind of odd to you a little bit right so I'm gonna click on front um, I'm going to um, this would be like this here so actually we would probably need this is this is a left view okay um, so it's automatically gonna try to put us in a left view for us we can load this image like this puts it back here now I can take my uh, my fish model that you see here we can control the model opacity I'll kind of uh, scale this up a little bit just by zooming in and try to match that up the best that I can and I've got the uh, perspective turned off now I can say store view like that 
And um, this will store this. Uh, if we go to front, we've got that. If we go back to left, it's going to push this in here and have this image on here. Um, this um, this will um, save with your 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 project, like I was saying, uh, for things. Uh, so we can go ahead and click in through there. Uh, that's another way of kind of doing things and uh, getting through there. And I'm just going to click through these guys. Let's do a front or a custom, something like that. All right, the last method that we're going to take a look at is loading up image planes and using the grid feature that they've got inside of uh, ZBrush. So you have to have your floor turned on for this. So you have your floor turned on. You can have perspective on or off for this. I'm just going to turn perspective off for this at this point. And um, if we go to draw and we click and drag this over like this, you can see that we've got um, the floor turned on. We've got this fill mode. There's these different modes for filling, and you can see kind of opacity of this and being able to see and look through the model, kind of like that. You've also got a grid size, so you can put that at 1 or something like 10 or uh, something like 5. Um, this will control the size of the grid that you have here. We'll put this on like 2, and you can see how that's kind of scaling that thing down. You've got your number of tiles that you have on here, so maybe you put four. All right, so you have this, and then um, you're able to take an image, and you can load it into this up, down, left, right, front, back area, right? So I'm just going to go to the left, right area. I'm going to go to map one, and we're going to load a map that we have. Now, if you haven't loaded a map, you remember from Spotlight, we already loaded in. If we wanted our texture and we import and we imported our image in, we would have an image within this slot. That's where it's going to expect to load these images in. You can go here as well and click import. doesn't really matter. So I've got this map one. I'm going to click on one of the, the fish models that we've got here, like this. And let me show you the modifiers that they've got on this thing here. Um, there is a snap, and if you do snap the mesh, if you've already got a mesh there, it'll try to resize this thing based off of the mesh that you got there. Uh, if we do left and right, if we do switch, uh, sorry, it's going to switch these maps between. You can have two different maps, like a left and a right, and it'll switch between those. Um, I'm going to flip this so it has the image going this direction, and you can see, um, because I've already got a model, it's going to try to fit it and everything else like that, but um, we can take our scale and you could scale this thing up a little bit you can go horizontal offset this way and you can do a vertical offset so I can kind of push this within here and then get this scaled up right here and kind of keep playing around with this until I get it into just the right spot that I want uh, this is why I was kind of telling you at the very beginning why I like square images um, that way if I wanted to use this as um, a method for getting this in here I could and uh, it would be pretty easy to do that so it might take a little bit of finessing to get everything just in the right spot you can see with this fill mode 3 we can see through the model quite a bit uh, 2, 1, 0 like this um, now if we do this uh, fill mode 2 and say front this puts the uh, image in front of the model so with these different fill modes you might be able to get the different kind of opacity that you're kind of looking for on there um, also your grid size does matter if we put this back to like one or two you see how that's scaling that up like that so depending on your grid size and what you've done with the scale and everything else like that um, this stuff uh, kind of matters so um, this is a way that you can get this you can actually take a look at the model and through here um, this is going to tell you if you're going to use one map for both uh, the left and the right. Um, now if you go to Sculpt, which is kind of cool, is if you can see this P line, it actually shows you on the model, like um, on the model as you're going across here, where it's lining up with, uh, with the image. So I think all that's some pretty, pretty powerful stuff. Um, again, if you want that to draw in front of there, you're going to have to put that on that fill mode like this. Uh, depending on your opacity that you're kind of looking for for the image you got these different fill modes like that as well um, if you want to turn uh, this stuff off you can go to fill mode zero and you can see you've got your grid still there like that for this and you'll see those grid lines if you want to turn that off you can just turn the floor off and you're kind of back to normal 
Now I do believe that these actually save with your project files as well, so that's just something else to keep in mind. So there you've got um, three different methods of pulling in image planes. It's really up to you which one you want to use and which one you're more comfortable with. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I think it really kind of matters. Like if you've really kind of laid this out, or if you've got uh, a concept artist that's given you uh, front, left, right, top images and stuff like that, this one probably makes the most sense. Um, you know, the under texture, like what we looked at. If you go to the reference image, you can do a custom one, and you could um, do a custom one for something like uh, if I went back to Photoshop and looked at uh, some of these designs, and if I loaded up another one, let's just open up some other images let me do uh, recent documents real quick and uh, let's see this one if we've got this yeah so like some of these are like this this guy here is a as a three-quarters image you know he's like not straight on not uh, not to the left or the right so you could you could take an image like this and you could make a square document out of that um, maybe copy that it's up to you if you want to fill it with black in the background or whatever you know but you might take that method and you might use this under uh, texture you could go to the reference views and use the custom one or you could go to spotlight and you could uh, use spotlight and at that point you could start taking the model and kind of roughly laying it out in you know three-dimensional shapes and try to match that thing because sometimes uh, you're just given a uh, three-quarters view of whatever that thing is that you're gonna have to build and you're gonna have to figure out in 3D how to make the, those shapes. So it's really nice if you got those modeling template views uh, and it's already set up like a blueprint, but um, a lot of times you're just gonna have to do the best that you can with what you got, and a lot of times you might just get a three-quarters view. So you're really gonna have to work with whatever, um, you know, the, the studio or the pipeline, like what you got kind of set up for that. But those three different methods should give you uh, enough to work with to uh, get you started with your image planes and start getting images within ZBrush and you can start sculpting on top of that stuff.